Hello, Internet! My name's Patrick, and this is Fringeworthy, a show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. Let's begin. Today, we're going to talk about a legacy deck. Your deck. Oh, no, not the deck you actually play. No, I assume you play something good, like Hypergenesis or Oops All Spells. No, we're talking about a deck that's called your deck, and it centers around shared fate. Playing your deck is partially straightforward and partially very confusing. The first part of playing the deck is trying to get out shared fate as fast as possible. To do this, we have some tutors, we have some deck filtering, and we have a lot of fast mana and some protection. Once you get shared fate out, the gameplay changes dramatically based on whoever you're playing against and what they're playing. But more on this when we get to the matchups. But let's first take a look at the deck list. Here's the full deck list for your deck. A lot of these may seem like strange choices, but all of them are very deliberate in why they have been included in this deck, as opposed to some of their usually better counterparts that you see in most other legacy decks. And here we see the core of the deck, four shared fates and four enlightened tutors. The enlightened tutors are usually used to tutor for shared fate, or sometimes for chrome mocks. Shared fate lets us draw from our opponent's deck instead of our own. They don't technically go to our hand, but for most intents and purposes, they do. Our deck is built so that there are very, very few ways that we can lose to anything in the deck. That way, we make sure we draw our opponent's win cons, and they get nothing. Here's what we've got for fast mana in the deck. Three of each Simeon and Elvish Spirit Guides, four Dark Rituals, and two Chrome Moxes. I settled on six spirit guides total because any more and we couldn't reliably dig through the deck. The same reason why there's only two chrome moxes. Now, chrome moxes are picked specifically because they are a very useless draw when our opponent gets them afterwards. Similarly, our opponents can't exile the spirit guides because they're already in exile. To make sure we get the cards we need, we've got four preordains, four brainstorms, and four ponders. Basic deck filtering. We just need a lot of it. The last piece of the deck, other than lands, is the removal slash protection. We've got four forces, four dazes, and four thought seizes to hopefully pick removal out of their hands or other counter spells, and two terminuses to get rid of any pesky creatures they may resolve before we cast shared fate. Keep in mind that a resolved deathrite shaman can sometimes be enough to kill this deck. Here's the land base for your deck. You'll notice that yes, there are shock lands in a legacy deck. The reason for this is we need the lands to only just be good enough for us to use and then be bad when our opponents draw them after we've resolved shared fate. The second reason for running shock lands is because I am a cheapskate. Now, let's talk about the sideboard. The first cards in our sideboard are some more shock lands which give us access to green and red mana. We use these so they are fetchable after we've cast shared fate so we have more ways to cast our opponent's spells. The last cards for our sideboard are four Leyline of Sanctity, for obvious reasons, three Tormod Script for graveyard-based decks, and four Days Undoing to use against any decks that don't have creatures in them. And now let's talk about some matchups. Burn is a common deck you might see a lot of. When playing against Burn, be more careful when fetching. Don't keep a hand that's going to rely on you fetching a shock land. In game two, make sure you board it in your ley lines and mulligan hard for them. In my experience, Miracles is the best matchup for this deck. Miracles is pretty slow, it usually doesn't have creatures before turn 3, and if you time everything right, you can beat them into counter war. Keep in mind that a counterbalance or top on its own is not a huge problem, but both together can be a real nuisance. It's also worth noting that you can't cast Miracle cards for their Miracle cost with Shared Fate in play. On the flip side, Shardless Bug is one of the worst matchups for us possible. They play efficient, aggressive creatures that are very resilient and hard to remove. Our best bet is being able to Thought Seize them out of something aggressive, casting Shared Fate, and drawing into a blocker. There's not a whole lot we can do against this deck. Show and Tell can either go really well or really poorly. If they try to Show and Tell in Omniscience and we have Shared Fate, they're going to have a tough time. Make sure if you're Thought Seizing them to get rid of any counter spells or anything that isn't Show and Tell or Omniscience. Always mulligan hard to get a shared fate in your opening hand against show and tell. And as you might guess, sneak and show is even worse for us, because they run almost exclusively creatures. We can't beat them simply by putting in shared fate when they put on omniscience. So your best bet in here is to try and make sure they don't have any large creature threats that they can either sneak attack or show and tell in. 
Eldrazi is far and away our worst possible matchup. They have taxing effects, and they have very cheap, efficient, aggressive creatures that come in swinging on turn 3 or sooner. Make sure you Thoughtseize and get rid of any cheap creatures they have, and try your best to stay alive until you can resolve Shared Fate. Agrolome is another difficult matchup. After resolving Shared Fate, try to make sure you have some sort of draw spell available afterwards so you can draw into some of their cards and stop any threats they have on the board. Keep in mind also that Dredge is another draw replacement effect, so even with Shared Fate in play, they can still choose to dredge back their life from the loam. For this deck, every version of Delver is basically the same. Our goal is, don't let them get any creatures, and then cast Shared Fate. After that, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure if they are playing a version of Delver that has red in it, that you bring in your Steam Vents for games 2 and 3. Reanimator is another great matchup for this deck. Let them put their large creatures in their graveyard all they want, and counter any of their reanimation spells. Once you've resolved Shared Fate, most of their reanimation spells will let you steal their creatures for you. If not, you can eventually power out a Gristlebrand since they run some Dark Rituals. Ah yes, Alluren, Scourge of Pacific Northwest Legacy players. Keep in mind, their combo won't let us win after we cast Shared Fate, since it involves using the hand. That means we just have to get there with Creature Beats. Be sure to use Thoughtseize to remove any of the pieces of their combo, especially those that'll let them fetch things, like either of the recruiters. Elves is a rough match. Make sure you're using your removal to slow down their combo, get rid of card draw or mana generation. Either of those are a good sign. Cast Shared Fate as soon as possible and hope for the best. Storm is a great matchup for us. Make sure to use Thoughtseize to target anything that says Storm on the card, or can get a card that says Storm. Otherwise, we just cast Shared Fate, draw through enough of their deck until we can generate Storm count enough ourselves, and win with Tendrils. Oopsel Spells is also a great matchup, but much like Alluren, we can't use their combo to beat them. So, we'll just have to cast their creatures and beat face with it. The last matchup I want to talk about is Dredge. In Game 1, weep silently into your playmat. In games 2 and 3, mulligan hard until you can find Tormod's Crypt. If you can't, weep loudly into your playmat. Some final thoughts before I round out the video. This is probably the most fun deck I have played in Magic in at least the 16 years I've been playing. Playing your deck forces you and your opponent to think in ways that no other deck can make you think. It's so much fun seeing the challenge that goes in to making the right decisions, even if it's very small. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a deck that fights for every single inch, but struggles to complete a mile. If you're really fed up with playing the same old, same old, please try this deck out. It's so much fun, especially if your meta is really concentrated around miracles and storm players. Then you're going to have a great time. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Fringeworthy. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Also, feel free to leave comments of some other Fringeworthy decks you'd like me to cover. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I hope forward to seeing you in the future. See you later. Yeah, I think we got it. <laughs>